Hey everyone, welcome back to the Zero API YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Chris, I'm a developer evangelist based out of Denver, Colorado. And today we're going to be digging into single sign up and single sign on with Zero. So on our website, you'll find two core pieces of docs regarding this. One is sign in with Zero, and one is sign up with Zero. So the concept here is that you know you can you can use Zero's identity mechanism to uh, enable the provisioning of a new account, but you also need to enable that user to access your web application a subsequent time using our Zero credentials. So all of this is possible because Zero uses both OAuth two and OpenID Connect. OAuth 2 is a framework around authorization, and this allows users to tell Zero's API that they're allowing your web app or another application to get actual accounting data or other types of data in their Zero org. OpenID Connect is a layer on top of OAuth 2, which is an auth authentication layer, meaning you're giving the API permissions to give your user data back, not just your accounting data, but your actual personal identifiable data. And this is the core piece of how you can offer Zero as an identity login provider. This is also known as social sign-in, um, you know, single sign-up, single sign-on. So there's lots of different terms, but this is the core technology um, across the industry that enables this to actually uh, work. So the first example is, uh, here's a demo of the app. We have a code base on GitHub, which I'll walk through in a minute. But basically this is a fully accessible web app where Zero is the primary uh, identity provider. So you know the app's called SSO Tutorial. I'm gonna give it, I've already given access to a couple. Let's give it access to my demo company. I'm gonna ask for the organizational data. So this app pulls invoices, but it also pulls my name, email, and user profile. So when I authorize this, Zero API is going to give back an ID token from OpenID Connect, an access token from OAuth 2, and then my app is going to use those tokens to interact with the API and get all the data I need to set this user up in a fully provisioned account with the necessary data we need to actually make your web app useful. So you can see I logged in as Christopher Knight. It's got my email. It's got my time zone. It's got my active organization and it's pulled in all my invoices. So I can tab through, uh, view some additional API functionality like um, deep links, so I can actually link back to this invoice in Zero, um, And then I can actually log out. So the only way to access this though is to log in through Zero. So if I log in again, that is how I access the application. We're finding this interim ground of using our API to pre-populate uh, either like a book a demo form or talk to sales or just an account creation form. So you can see here, we've got this fake app demo. Uh, you know, you can sign in with zero or you can register manually. Okay, we've got first name, last name, email, basic. Okay, we've got our business name. Okay, number of customers, not quite sure yet. I'd have to go look at my list and you know count them up, page through. My currency, okay, you might have lost me at this point. Time zone, phone, address and then setting a password. So all great information, but you know a lot of folks don't ask for these things because it's a huge drop-off point. Say we leverage you know, single sign-on light, we'll call it, and we've connected, I've already connected my organizations, but we're just gonna keep going for the demo. I'm gonna ask for my organization settings scope, my business transactions, and my contacts, in addition to the open ID scopes. So get back. The code path it decodes the ID token. It uses the access token to make a couple of calls, and you can see how I got all this information pre-filled. So first name, last name, email. We've got my company name. We've got my number of customers. This uh, went through the contacts endpoint and found out how many uh, contacts of type customer this organization had. My base currency, my time zone, my phone number, whether it was a cell phone or an office number, and my whole entire address. So now I just set my password and boom, I've converted to a new user in this you know, example demo company. Now I can't access this web app again with my just my zero data. I need to know the password that I set, but we find it's a really good interim solution 
to create a great user experience and leverage existing data, which ultimately makes our marketplace better and your app gets more users. So now I just want to sh jump into the code for those a little bit. Um, the first application is a Node Express app, and I really just want to show the callback route. So when you get a callback through the OAuth2 flow, we're going to basically exchange the uh, temporary code coming back for a whole token set. So if you're familiar with our uh, API and you've done this before, we've got great docs on all um, the different programming languages we support and all of our SDKs. And yeah, happy to field any questions if you're just trying to get to their OAuth2. But I'm kind of assuming you've already set up the configuration and you're gonna wanna like use this to actually provision a user account or um, you know use that ID token to actually allow users to access your app. So once we get our token set, um, we basically pluck off the ID token, we decode it, uh, and this is already after we validated that it's legit. We wanna use an open source library to do that, which is included in the um, SDKs we offer. And once we have the dec decoded ID token, what we're doing in this uh, sequence of logic of how we allow people to log in and access is first we look up to see if there is a user that already has taken that email address. So from the ID token email, we look to our user database model and we say, hey, if we found anything that exists, um, and then at the end here, we basically say, if there already was a user, let's update it with any new change parameters or else we actually create a user in our database. And the user params are all from data we've gotten from the API. So we get the first name, last name, address, email, um, the zero user ID, and we just store the decoded ID token raw in addition to the whole token set. Um, and so this is, this is so we can store the access token to make future zero API calls directly in relation to our user. So it's super solid. We have this mechanism to either create or update um, you know, if you change your last name in zero and then you re-log into this web app, we're actually plucking off all that data and resaving it in the database. So uh, in addition, if you look through this code base, there's some other things I've done. Um, in the dashboard, we immediately um, make requests to those invoices using the, you know, zero user who just logged in, their active tenant. And we've got some other... Um, Let's see, we've got some other security mechanism in here. So their session lasts for an hour. This is just one example of how to do this in Node, but we set a recent session and then we sign that into a cookie. Um, and the signature is based off of the UUID on that user. So it's sort of a secure mechanism to keep to log in that user and keep them around for one hour so they don't have to re-log in. But you can throttle that out and you know everyone's user management system is different. This is just one semi-secure example on how to use the ID token with the database in Node to securely log in and out your users. And then when the user goes to actually log out, let's see, we basically clear the session of those cookies so that next time they visit the browser, we don't have that signed cookie to, to securely log them back in. Great, so that was the example for the full uh, SSO demo. That was for this one, which is like the full login permission. You can see I just got logged back in because my browser has that cookie. Um, and then if I log back out, now I can't visit the dashboard. It will just kick me back here. So this other demo code, let's just run through that and show you how simple that is. Uh, this is a little Ruby app called Sinatra. Um, it's very basic. Just really wanted to get across how simple this can be. We've got one main file of logic. Um, the readme will set you up on how to actually run this locally. Um, but uh, in essence, we set up a zero client with our credentials in the callback. We do very similar to the node example. We get a token set from the temporary code, this is the uh, authorization code grant of OAuth2. We get the ID token details by decoding the JWT from the token set. And here we just sort uh, by the most recently connected connection. This is if you're going through and you know, adding multiple zero orgs that many of you are familiar with. 
But then it's you know pretty simple. We make a call to the organization's endpoint, and then we make a call. We loop through, uh, we paginate through the contacts endpoint to get the total contacts count. This is how many you know, customers they're going to have. Then we get the address, we get the phone number, and then I just build up this uh, hash called form data. And you can really see how much information we get here just from a few super basic API calls at the beginning. We get the given name and family name, that's first name, last name, email, org name, context count, currency, time zone, uh, street address, postal code, phone, and then we're gonna have the users set their own password. So from this, you know, we kick it back to the view, and then I'm just setting default values on all these required parameters, like first name is the form data given name. Uh, so that's pretty much it. This is a great solution for those of you who want to leverage the Zero API tools to convert more users, but your you know sales process or user signup process doesn't quite fit, you know, login and subsequent access with Zero, but you want to make a good onboarding experience for those first couple users. So that's pretty much it. Um, we've got a couple blogs on the concept. I'm going to link below. If you've got any questions or comments or additions to the code or you know, just general sentiments. If this video is helpful, uh, please shoot me a comment below. Uh, thanks again for joining us and we'll see you in the next video.